Okay, so this is a demonstration of how to care for and sharpen your engraving tools. To sharpen your engraving tools, you'll need a in India combination sharpening stone like we have here. This is something that all printmakers should have, so maybe put it on your Christmas list. Um, some sharpening oil in a sharpening can. And I highly advise having a, uh, a little tool called a crocker. I'll show you how to use this in a second. It's a jig that makes this whole process way easier. And um, of course, uh, your burins and uh, other tools for wood engraving, metal and wood. Um, okay, so let's get started. If I have a tool, I'm gonna make room here, um, like this little guy here that really needs to be sharpened. This is a number four square burin. And um, the number fours have a little bit of flex in their shaft right here. Some people really like that when they're uh, doing metal engraving. Um, the no as a note, the number, this is a number seven. You can see the difference in the size of the, the ends there. Um, this has less flex in it, or almost no flex in the shaft. Um, and so it performs a little bit different when uh, uh, engraving into copper or zinc. Um, you can see the difference in the size of the tips there. They don't make too much of a different mark because of the geometry of the end of that facet. They're both square. Um, so that's a little bit about that. Anyway, the way that I test the sharpness of my tools, well, I can feel it if I'm engraving and it's uh, hard to engrave and that sucks, um, is I will um, push this into my thumbnail. I can feel this catch or not. If it doesn't catch, then I know the tool needs to be sharpened. Let's see. This one is duller than that one, so I'll sharpen this tool. This is also a, oh, this is a number six, so it's in the middle of those two. Um, okay, so the way that, uh, since this tool definitely needs sharpened, the tip may have, have broken off let me get this into the camera. The tip may have broken off a little bit right there. Find a focal point. Sometimes that very, very small tip will break off and that needs to be uh, reflattened down and the runners need to be uh, reestablished. So I've got a facet face here and the runners here. I need to hone both of those. Um, I am going to, in this case, because I know this needs a, a little bit of work, Go to the coarse side, the dark side of the stone, get a little oil on there. Okay. If you do not have a, a crocker jig, um, you need to make sure that you, you want to sharpen the face of this, the facet right here. And I'm going to lay this down. Let me hold this up so you can see it. Like this so that that sets flat on that stone right there. I don't want to rock it around like that and make a nice, this needs to stay flat. So I'm going to feel that and feel it flatten out and then go around in a circle. And to do that, I need to sort of lock the joints in my wrist, hands and elbow so I don't turn it like that. It needs to stay flat. And so I can, Get underneath here and do that real quick. This does take a little bit of practice and patience. Okay. After I do that for a little while, I can feel it. Re oh, and yes. Even that little bit did a lot of good. Usually it takes way more than that, especially if I really damaged it or dropped it on the floor. After that, I'm going to sharpen the runners. And to do that, I'm gonna lay it flat on each of those runners, the bottom, not the top two, but the bottom two to, that create this point right there. 
I'm gonna put two fingers down and run this back and forth. And I'm really concerned about the tip. That very tip needs to be nice and flat. And make that point. It's all about the geometry of the point. I'm gonna turn this over. Get a little oil on here. And now I am going to do the same on the uh, finer side of the stone. Lock this all in place. Make sure that feels nice and flat. And then hone that, hone those runners like this. So it's possible to sharpen your tools without a jig. Many people did this for many hundreds of years in this ancient technique. And a voila, nice and sharp tool. But if I do happen to have the advantage of having a crocker, and you can see this box is old. This is, God, this is probably as old as I am or older. Um, then definitely is an easier task, especially if you have a really dull tool, to use this tool here. All right. So um, the way that this works is, let's see, this little piece slides in and out of here. And this slides in here like that into the jig, okay? And that little tongue, little pressure plate, oops. Let's put this back in here. This little pressure plate that came out a second ago right here, you can see the geometry on that. So it's on the top. Let me get it so I can see this. It sets on the top of that and slides in. And this screws down gently, I'm not Hercules here, to hold this in place. Okay, see how that's sitting? Okay, these other knobs, this will change if I loosen this one here, it changes this angle like that and i'll need to probably do that in a minute this one changes this angle here so by adjusting those two i'll loosen them up just a little bit i want to set this down here and adjust those until again this sets perfectly flat on there i don't want it see this i don't want it like that i don't want it like that I want it perfectly flat and I want it perfectly flat this way I don't want it this way or that way so I'm going to set this down and I've got to get down here you can probably see my top of my head here and I'm going to adjust this pull this back out a little bit I'm going to adjust this so that that will set perfectly flat. All right. All right, so this now is adjusted. I had to pull this back out a little bit to where that's gonna set perfectly flat uh, on that face onto the stone. One of the things that I can do to help be sure that I am getting this perfectly sharpened up on the tip is to take a Sharpie and make the tip of that black with a Sharpie. So as I sharpen it, I can see where, exactly where this is being uh, sharpened or honed. And so I'll turn this back over Another little bit of oil out here. 
hold it like this and gently go in circles with this. You can see the advantage of it. This is way easier than locking my uh, wrist and elbow so that things don't, the, fast, the face of that doesn't, doesn't turn. I'm sure that I am getting the, uh, that facet perfectly flat this way. And when I look at this now, this tip in the light, look at that tip. There's no more Sharpie on there. Ooh-wee. Looks like I, I've got that going on. So I'm going to turn this over, still some oil on here, and go back to honing that tip. Okay, so now I can uh, release this from the jig. Put that little crocker jig back in there. Another thing to put on y'all's Christmas list. Those come from a variety of places, but um, Renaissance Graphic Arts has them for sure. I'm gonna put a little bit more oil on here. This oil can's generous. And I wanna just uh, well, let me take a second here. If I'm feeling the edge, if I want to feel the edge of this, just like when you sharpen up a, a, a kitchen knife, perhaps, you get a little curl of metal. In this case, since I was sharpening, honing the flat front facet, there's a little curl of metal underneath here along this runner and along this bottom runner too. I can just feel that just a little bit. And so when I, I'm honing this runner, I'm also taking that little curl of metal down which is going to make this tool now perfectly sharp. Okay. And ready to go, whether I am using this tool for engraving um, copper or zinc or wood or whatever material, some people even engrave plexiglass, that is perfectly sharp and ready to go, okay? So that is for the square um, urine. These others work pretty much exactly the same way. So if I have more of a, um, a lozenge shape or, or one of these um, tint tools for wood engraving, uh, what I want to do here on this tint tool is, uh, let me put a little bit of sharp, I'm sharpieing this, you can see now here. And uh, for this, this tool is already sharp. I am just going to use the fine side of this, this stone for this example. But if you need to use the other side, because you have a dual tool, go ahead. I, mean, I need to do the same thing here. I need to uh, be sure that these, these runners are honed and that The face is uh, sharpened as well. And you can see, this is a relatively new tool actually, and you can see this machining mark still on part of this, but you can see the tip here where those machine marks are um, beginning to disappear. Um, I will hook this into the crocker the exact same way if I need to sharpen the face of that. Oftentimes that's the case. Now, there we go. I did use the pressure plate actually. Got this to set in here. And I wanna find again the perfectly flat angle until I have that tip honed. And then work those runners again to get that curl of metal off. The advantage to wood engraving or engraving on high impact polystyrene, which I like to do, is that it doesn't dull your tools very easily. So you don't have to sharpen as often as you do on metal. But um, yeah, that's a nice sharp tool right there. That's ready to go. Um, well, that is it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, have fun engraving.